Well, I think even now cockfighting is liable to send people rushing to their phones to dial 999. But there were the notable events, and there weren't many more spectacular scenes than those which greeted Sir Francis Chichester on his return home. She's there. Sir Francis has sailed round the world. From the shore, they beheld a great armada heralded by carnival plumes of red, white and blue. Gypsy Moth reached her own boy and was made fast. Lights helped to pick her out and the watchers saw a cheerful way. Sir Francis Chichester's homecoming, a recreation of the glory of Old West Country Sea Dogs. But who was Harold Wilson trying to emulate when he held this famous press conference on the Isles of Scilly, also in 1965? It was not really the style of Disraeli, Gladstone, or even Clem Attlee. But through his home on St Mary's, Sir Harold was a familiar figure in the Southwest, both in and out of office. In 1962, Sir Alec Douglas Hume drew crowds more befitting royalty or pop stars than a prime minister. Ted Heath in his Board of Trade days, before he went on to bigger things in Downing Street, also made the westward trek regularly. And there are schools which carry Mrs Thatcher's name as education minister rather than prime minister. No West Country year is complete without its royal visitors, and everywhere the crowds. We've watched the royal family grow from childhood to maturity. And we've been aware of a great liking for and interest in hats. And there's always been a warm welcome for Princess Margaret. And for the West, an equally warm smile from the Queen Mother. But politics and royalty were not the only subjects. Beatniks and St. Ives dominated headlines in the 60s. Any financing budget to interview? Do you think that shouting to people that they would be better off in dustbins is in keeping with St. Ives? No, they are. Probably pink. You want to pink? That's all they are. You do, you think, do you think that this gives St. Ives a good impression, good shouting impression. out things like that? You know business here. Why not? You you can just in the wrong you're place. You're in the damn place. In the wrong place. You're running the bloody place. We're trying to get visitors here, not send them away. Well, visitors we spoke to yesterday have saw no fault with them being here. Yeah, oh, that you might hear a few. What you're trying to do is to blacklist this town to stop good visitors coming here. I worked 46 years in one bloody firm, and they're getting more off national assistance than I'm getting on a pension. Well, how do you feel life is in St. Ives? Well, it'd be all right if it weren't for the people turning the swags the way we dress. I mean, I've just been in there and I said, can I have a cup of tea, please? Take away. She says, no, I'm not serving you. I said, can I have the reason why? She says, I haven't got a reason. Tradition and the offbeat have always been part and parcel of the West Country's makeup and character. And man's basic instinct to hunt has also been strong. This desire to hunt manifests itself beyond deer, fox, otter and hare. The Congaree was an unwilling victim on the Bristol Channel coast. Some reporters have found themselves in most unusual outfits. I think my head was round the other way before you twisted it. The unmistakable voice of Clive Gunnell, practicing his walks. And if Kenneth MacLeod must be regarded as Mr. Diary so far as the studio work is concerned, then Clive was certainly Mr. Diary out on location. Let's go to the paper. Walk towards the window. 
We must never forget the West's own inventor, the late Mr. Herbert Hayden, a Western supermare. In case they come any time. Well, uh, the suit is merely an, ex is an explanation of why pilots of flying saucers appear like this. Because, you see, they are liable to static charges. Adamski, when he stood by the side of that flying saucer on his first contact with a pilot, wanted to go inside, the same as I should. But he got no static suit on, and he was waved away. And as he turned away, his arm just touched the periphery of that I saucer. See, yeah. And the static charge hit his arm up and went down, and he oh, lost oh, the use of it for three weeks. So I continued. And at a more mundane level, a boon for cricketers. The painless bat with his springing carried through from the handle to the blade. Rubber sandwich non-sting bat. The only one in the world, and I'm the only manufacturer that will guarantee a bat not to sting bought from me. Do you think that'll give every hit a six? Ah, uh, it'll butt fours into sixes, sir, if you'll use my bat. And singles into fours? Singles into perhaps two, sir. No, we mustn't exaggerate. Maybe for some matches this year, the England eleven could have done with some of those. <laughs> well, we've had a fair number of reporters on the diary since 1961, and in the late 60s, we said hello to a young girl who was known in amateur theatrical circles. We'd seen her work on local newspapers, and she'd done a stint with the BBC in Plymouth. Was she someone who would make a name in the world of television? And their trousers. In here, it's a bit like the tropics. All I can say is, who needs Tenerife when we've got sunshine like this in North Devon? Good night. Here then is the lady who first exposed her legs for Westwood Diary in 1972, Miss Angela Rippon. <laughs> Angela, how long were you with Westwood Television? Four and a half years altogether, Roger. And uh, when you first came here, what was your first job? Well, I was actually employed, as you said, I, I was with the BBC before. They asked me to come here because Westwood decided that they'd like to have a woman's programme. And I was invited to join the company as editor of the woman's programme, which we called Open House, which ran for the entire four and a half years that I was here. So it did. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, Westwood was, um, I mean, is, th as it was then, a small station where people were expected to be able to do everything. So although I came to edit the woman's programme, I ended up presenting it, doing most of the reporting and the research on it. And from time to time, I used to purloin the reporters from Westwood Diary. So I had a lissom young Stuart Hutchinson working for me and the Mr. Andy Price. Um, but then we went on to do things like the children's programme that I produced, which was called Young Eyes, which um, I think uh, uh, your announcer actually um, remind me of his name. David Rogers. David Rogers, that's, that's right. right. He started yes. work on that for me before he went to the Westwood. And then we did uh, documentaries, three of them. That's right. Westwood and for one Report. of those documentaries, you actually won an award. Yes, we won the silver medal at the New York Film Festival for a film that I did called Silent Valley, which John Pett, in fact, directed. And I, I was looking at your awards earlier, and I see that it's missing. So whoever's using it as a door prop, I'd like it back, please. <laughs> uh, but there, there were documentaries, there was Westwood Report, there were all sorts of things. And if ever the diary editor saw me sitting down with nothing to do, he used to say, would I come and work for him? Which was how I came to do that story, which was in North Devon, on the very first sunbed that we ever had here in the West Country. So you'd say you were a maid of all trades while you were here? Well, I think we all had to be jacks of all trade. I mean, I think we wouldn't have lasted if we hadn't been. <laughs> Thank you very much, Angela. Well, we've got to take a break now, but stay with us for more surprises from 20 Years of Westwood.
wise men came to see him wearing silken robes. You can come just as you are. Born as a baby in the midnight, bringing us eternal day. Came like the dawning of the sunlight, came to take our sins away. Told the story to a dying world. Listen as we sing it to you. Like the shepherds looking for the living Lord, sing and you will find Him too. Born as a baby in the midnight, bringing us eternal day. Came like the dawning of the sunlight. Came to take our sins away.
sing alleluia. Mary, sing alleluia. Mary, sing alleluia. This is your day of joy. Welcome back to part two of a program designed to bring back a few memories and reflections of the daily potpourri of life, people and events in the West Country. Or as Eric Putnam always refers to it in the Cornish Times, the best country. Closely allied with our major program, the diary, has been sport. We may have lacked the Liverpools and Manchester United, and it's only in the past couple of years that Somerset's become a major force in cricket. But all that never worried one of our very early sports editors, David Vine.